Alrighty then. I think I am live, maybe. I hope. Okay, great. I think it's popping up now. Awesome sauce. Looking good. Hello there. How are you all doing tonight? Hope everyone's doing fine. Just want to give you an update on the old photo dono. I got to figure out how to do some of these updates while I'm out on the road or doing stuff like that. Uh, basically, I just wanted to let you know about some things that are coming up uh, in case you weren't aware of them. Get some events coming up. Uh, I'm teaching a uh, camera basics class uh, tomorrow. That's for people who just need a little bit of help with their photography. So if anybody's interested in doing that. Also, too, I'm doing another, uh, it's an e another evening with Photo Dono. If I remember correctly, what's on that list is a little bit uh, how-to things with uh, Luminar. So you might have some fun with that. Uh, the camera basis class is 55 bucks, and the Luminar one is uh, for free. So there you go. Uh, let's see what else is coming up. Um, I'm going to be doing some, uh, if anybody's interested, I am doing some private uh, tutoring sessions for photography, for cameras, or a little bit of photo editing. If anybody who is interested in that, uh, you're more than welcome to, again, sign up for that. All these classes and things that I'm mentioning, you can always check out, at, uh, of course, on uh, my website. It's also listed on uh, JPS website. The link should be in the description as well. If I keep doing this really fast, I think I'm going to get a headache or something. Uh, a couple things. Uh, for those who, who have been following some of my shenanigans on my, my, uh, my personal page, uh, one of the things that, uh, that's been happening is I've been having troubles with the uh, DEO and trying to find out getting, you know, getting some, uh, some, some cash from those guys. So, so, I, so I couldn't wait for them any longer. So I picked up a job as an Uber Eats driver because Photo Dino got some bills to pay. You know what I'm saying? And they you know cash don't last forever. So at least it's kind of, a, it's been an interesting gig. So that's been kind of fun. So I've been doing that. Uh, I've had a couple of people throw a couple of jobs my way. So that's been very nice. Uh, we'll see how all those leads pan out. So I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Also, I picked up a couple of Patreon subscribers. So uh, I do have a Patreon page. Thank you so much. Uh, I am, I've ordered the postcards and the postcards will be coming forthwith for those who, who are looking for those. Um, I'm going to be updating my... Um, uh, download uh, 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 file for, for some of the benef uh, benefit uh, members, uh, or the one member who asked for uh, for electronic downloads for some of my uh, stuff. So I'll be be changing that one out uh, uh, pretty soon here with the next uh, day or so. Uh, let's see what else is going on. That's pretty much about it. There's some more things coming down the pike that I can't talk about right now. So we'll see how that goes. Um, one of the things that's been really interesting, it's been really a lot of fun doing, is I've had some, uh, uh, you know, through Johnson Photo, a couple of uh, 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 online sessions with Tamron and with Olympus. Uh, Carlos uh, Quilancini, you know, the Olympus tech specialist, has been doing weekly uh, uh, WebEx uh, uh, demos with some of the uh, Olympus cameras. So that would be something you guys might be interested in if you guys like Olympus or want to find out more about Olympus cameras. The well, next one's going to be on Thursday at 3 o'clock. Again, all this is listed, again, through uh, the website, Johnson Photo Imaging, also on my website. Again, the links are in the description below. Uh, I'm going to be posting this video on my YouTube channel. I've got a YouTube channel, and uh, I have now reached the, the plateau of 22 subscribers. Thank you very much for all those who did. Uh, apparently, according to YouTube, if I have 100 subscribers, I get to name it Photodon. The, the, the channel itself. The channel has the name Photo Down, but if you type in the link, you know, youtube.com slash Photo Down, nothing shows up. You have to literally search for Photo Down or I have to post the link, which I did in the description. But if I get up to 100 subscribers, I can actually call Photo Down. I can go Photo Down, uh, maybe youtube.com slash Photo Down. So that ought to be, uh, that'd be fun. So if I get up to that, that'd be cool. I'm not sure what I'll do when I get to that moment. Um, I have, you know, I notice a lot of YouTubers out there that do some uh, giveaways and stuff like that. But as I said, uh, Papa's got some bills to pay. That YouTube channel ain't paying nothing except just to uh, hopefully uh, put out some uh, goodwill out there. So, which is fine. It works well for me. I'd rather have goodwill than no will or bad will. 
Uh, let's see what else has been going on. Um, that's pretty much about it. Well, I'd like to talk to you a little bit, a little bit about some stuff that's coming up, uh, uh, some things I've been doing. Now, keep in mind, I'm, I'm posting through Zoom. So if you're chatting through, uh, since I am also using this and also posting it on Facebook, I can't readily see the chats as, as quickly. Uh, I do have that other screen open, and I should be able to see some of those hopefully soon. Whoop, oh, whoop, oh, whoop. Oh. There we go. So hopefully I should see some of the chats, but the, uh, the Facebook, it, it, it's like about a 20 second delay on that stuff. So I'll keep an eye out for those best as I can. So if somebody wants to leave me a chat, they can do that as well too. Uh, but tonight what I'd like to go over just a little bit, you know, again, I don't want to take up too much of anybody's time about stuff, you know, especially checking this stuff out is that I've been getting, uh, especially some of the webinars I've been doing, you know, my own and through the other things it's about, black and white uh, imagery through, especially with digital cameras. Now for some of you, that's an old hat, it's no big deal, but for some folks, uh, they've been trying to struggle with trying to uh, come up with ways to do black and white on there. Now, of course, there's the old standby, we'll go buy a film camera, buy black and white film, and of course, get it processed and all that stuff. But of course, you know, there's hard, hard, hard to find those types of places where you can go out and do that. So one of the things that uh, I've been doing quite frequently is just basically, I shoot everything digitally and I also have the option of making it black and white afterwards and just applying what I've known about black and white imagery to that particular image so I can get a nice, cool, crisp, clean one in as well of that. Now, what I'm gonna do is, and then I'll, this will completely block my Facebook uh, page, is I'm gonna do what's called screen share. And I'm gonna screen share my, my Lightroom, uh, 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 my Lightroom set up for, for black and white. So I'll just give it, I'm not going to again go into great details, no technical babble, or at least not to try to keep it not too much. Just to kind of give you an idea about how I, how I work through the process on, with some things. One of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some, some thing I shot with my old Nikon camera and something that I shot with my Olympus camera. Uh, one of the things I did do recently within the last couple of months is I, I sold all my Nikon gear and I purchased an Olympus camera. There's been a number of reasons for that, and I've mentioned a couple of the videos, but basically in a nutshell, I, I bought the Olympus camera because it, it has some features that I really, really enjoy, like live composite. Another thing, too, that it has in there is have these art filters, which are not uncommon to any of these cameras, but I really like the way it processes it black and white on there, which is really kind of cool. But I'll get more into that part of it later. But uh, it also, it's a much lighter system. It doesn't mean it's the perfect system or it's the best system in the world. You know, again, it just works out really well for what I needed to do with. Personally, I think I need to be a two camera photographer again. So I think I, sh I think maybe I, you know, again, I kind of, I might have to uh, think about that and maybe pick up a, another uh, uh, secondhand uh, Olympus camera down the road. We'll see how that goes. So anyway, so without further ado, let me uh, share my screen here. So I'll just take about just a second or two here. So you get to watch me stare at blankly at a screen going, Oh, what's going on? I don't know. Let's see, I think this is it. There we go, this should be the screen. Now you should see me a little video over there in the top right corner on there in the Facebook uh, Facebook land. So if you see all that, that's awesome. If not, well, I'll we'll find out later. <laughs> so well, it's like I said, I can't see the chat, so just bear with me on that. So one of the things that I, I wanna point out to you on some of this stuff is that when I'm working on creating a black and white image, Sometimes I do it, you know, as an afterthought, but other times I do it with uh, deliberate, deliberate, excuse me one second. One of the things that, uh, um, that I did when I, uh, last year, I went on a little photo safari. Uh, my aunt has a cabin up in the uh, Smoky Mountains and uh, I, I was able to uh, take advantage of that, as it were. And thank you very much, Auntie is that I wanted to do some, uh, some photography up there. And I don't get too often to up into the Smokies or to the mountain areas. You know, being mostly raised in Florida, I'm used to seeing flat, flat, and more flat. So whenever you see like things like, like you know, hills, I get excited. So, you know, hey, you know, there you go. So one of the things um, I, I did when I was going over, we kept driving over this bridge. And this was over the French Broad River. This is in the uh, uh, eastern part of uh, Tennessee. Excuse me. And um, what had happened was, is that I really liked the view of the bridge, but every time we went over there, it just didn't feel like it was the right time of day, right time of day. And, you know, and I was also ostensibly going to be shooting some Milky Way stuff, but this bridge was nowhere in the right spot to be doing that. Uh, you know, again, I, there's only so many places I could, 
got to in the amount of time, but I really wanted to get a picture of the bridge. The issue being is that by the time I got time to do this stuff, because again, I'm pulling off to the side of the road, having to walk across the bridge just to get to the side. So the issue is that by this time of the day, the sun's kind of hanging kind of low. Just to kind of give you an idea of what the picture looked like, I'm gonna minimize some of this right here so you don't have to see all that. Is that when I'm looking at this right here, this is pretty much the picture I was getting. Now, for most of you might see, again, you might see some of the uh, settings down there, which is at one eighth of a second at F16, ISO 100. So you can see, I could have probably done a faster show speed, but the issue that I was kind of worried about the, when I was shooting this, when I saw this, is that I was gonna lose some of these highlights and details that are inside some of these areas right there. So just doing it one shot or maybe trying to trick at the uh, file later on, trying to get something out of it, it's not so great. So I did what was something that was called HDR. And what I did was I basically bracketed the hell out of the shot to try to get something a little bit more salvageable to that. That's not the only ones I did. I also did a couple of brackets over here as well. And so you can see that what it does, bracketing does, what that means is that I get a variety of different exposures to play with. So that way, when I put it all back together, it looks kind of cool. Now, again, you can see these were shot from a slightly different angle. I didn't really like the composition after I quickly reviewed it. I moved myself over a little bit to get me to this spot right here. And I basically just ended up just doing like a, a series of, uh, I think about five different ones in this particular collection right here. So that's not too bad. It worked out pretty well for me and I was very happy with it overall. Now, when I was done with it, what I had to do is I had to basically put them all together. Now, I use a program called Aurora HDR, which takes all the original files and creates this particular image right here. So you can see right there, I, you know, I, I got the shadow details that I wanted in these little areas because I didn't want to quite lose them yet, or I thought that they were important to me. But mainly what happened is that it burned down this little area right here, which is what I really wanted it burned down. Because you can see the light is just really bouncing horribly off of, the, uh, off of that. Even when I brought, brought it down to about here, it was just horrible, you know, to that. You know, I literally would have to get that light burned down to expose it like this, you know. And that's, you know, that's okay to a point, but you can see in order to get that down there, it was just horrible. So by combining all these pictures into something like this, here we go, I got a much more realized image of what there. Because, you know, the human eye, I couldn't even pick out with this with the human eye, all these little small striations of the clouds, even though they were quite, you know, even though they're there, I could kind of make them out, but the light is so bright, it's kind of washing out in front of me. The main thing is I had to make sure when I did my bracketing that I wasn't changing my histogram. My histogram, just to kind of give you an idea, is that the histogram, let me go to develop mode on here. You should be able to see it, I think. Hope I can move my video so you should be able to see it right there. You can see right there that it's kind of going off the page right there. What I mean by off the page is just shooting straight up. You know, the idea is if, I, if I'm doing it right, I want to keep it a little bit more balanced so I get a little more of this in there. So this one was slightly too much on there, but it brought these shadows out there. So yeah, I knew I was gonna lose that in there. So anyway, so when I ended up bracketing, I just did that. And then of course you can see how the histogram changes. Now I don't really follow the histogram as much. I know if I do the, these bracketing uh, areas, if I do it and I do it right, I'll be all right. I just can't move the camera around too much. Of course, I'm on a bridge. I don't really, I don't have really have room on this bridge to really hit my tripod out. So I'm really trying to handhold this and keep it all together. The good thing about some of the the, the later uh, uh, programs with the H yeah, that you can do HDR and is it'll actually I'll do an I think it's called auto line and align everything back up. So there might be some little bit of cropping later on, but it's not to the point where I'm going to be you know significantly uh, disturbed by it or changed by it. But now that when I get stuff like this, when it gets done, then I'm like, oh, great. Now, that's pretty much what I was hoping I was going to get by doing all that. There's some things in there that kind of bugged me. I, I, you know, I, I thought, well, it's kind of cool. That's green. You can see I haven't really done any developing changes on this particular one yet. I didn't want to do anything like that this time. I just wanted just to have at least a decent picture. But the thing is, when I was shooting these bracketing shots and I was reviewing them, is that I was thinking, you know, I'm going to make this into a black and white picture. I think this would be a really pretty black and white landscape. So once I got this done, um, I used another piece of software called uh, Luminar. And at that time, it was Luminar 3 to basically go in there and tweak the, uh, the black and white a little bit. 
And what I ended up doing is I ended up making a couple of options right here, just tweaking around. Mainly what the tweaking around is doing is trying to get these blacks right here as black as I can. So I got to here. You can see what I did is I got rid of some of those white specks over there. The other thing too that was bugging me about the whole picture, and I'll go back to see a little bit easier to see in color, is that of course you had the telephone lines right here, the, or the power lines going through the shot. So I basically went in there and I tried to clean it up as best as I could in Photoshop just to get rid of all that stuff. Now you might say, well, you know, the, the sky's really black up there, but how does it get so black? Well, it's because I'm basically fooling around with some of the colors on there. If you were to see this picture in color, which I don't have anymore, is that you would actually see it, the colors are actually kind of shift. By changing the tonal range of the color, you change how the black and whites get perceived. So for instance, if we go to this one right here, just to give you a little Cook's tour of that, and I want to make this a black and white, right? So that's what it looks like in black and white. I'm not a big fan of that particular black and white, you know, and you can, there's a bunch of presets you can stuff you can use, but by modifying these colors, See, just by changing the blue, making it dark, I get this really nice dark black sky. You can see how it just I mean, automatically just really brings everything into, into focus. So that's part of the things that I'm working on when I'm doing that stuff. I know that when I'm shooting that, this will be one of the things that I'll be doing when I'm doing all this stuff. So this is like one of the times where I thought, you know, this would be a really great black and white landscape. And, you know, it doesn't mean I'm always right about this. It just means that's what I liked. I thought it worked out pretty well. So I was very, very happy with that. So it did a pretty good job. I was very happy. So now I'm going to stop sharing this particular one. I'll show you another one that I did. Now, not everything I do is going to be just straight black and white. You know, that one was shot with my Nikon camera. So I didn't. And one of the things with Nikon, I'll, I'll show you this real quick. Let me pull it up so we can get to it real, real easy is that one of the things that's kind of cool is that you, you, most of your cameras can shoot black and white. So I'm going to go back to screen share again. And I'm going to go to, where is it at? Here we go. There's this screen right here. I'm going to move this up a little bit. Now, oops, I don't want to do that. Hang on one second, guys. Sorry about that. Well, actually, I could probably do that. I don't know. I'll just do this. Open with preview. That's what I want to do. All right. So, sorry. Let me go back to a different one. I'm going to go back and share screen. And let's go to preview. Okay. It's like, let me do that. So, let's just go to share to desktop. Let's see. Where's desktop at? Oh, desktop right there where I can't see it right in front of me. So let's go to desktop, but I'm going to go to this program called Preview on my Mac so you guys can kind of see the results. So I, I did a couple of uh, things, quick searches on uh, uh, online, and I found a couple of images that kind of, kind of explain what I was doing. So one of the things that you can do is you can shoot what's called monochrome. It's under, like for, the, for Canon's picture style. For a Nikon, and they call it picture control. And you can make black and white images on it. Now, these are full, from full frame cameras, not the mirrorless systems. I think the mirrorless systems have gone a little bit different in some of that stuff. But, but you kind of get the idea. And I think they've kept these things in most of the mirrorless systems, where you can actually go in there and shoot a black and white. The, key, the caveat is if you're shooting raw and you put it, import it into Lightroom, it's going to actually flip it back to color because all the color information gets recorded. And you just have to be re redo it. So I don't really, when I was shooting with an icon or my or a full frame Canon like this, and I chose these two options right here, picture control or, you know, picture style. I don't really keep it like that. You know, it's just it just doesn't really. It's not useful to me, especially in my workflow. So it's not something to do. I just know that I'm going to be. This, the image is pretty much set in my mind. I know I'm going to shoot black and white. So that would be it. Now, one way you can go around that is you can shoot a RAW and a JPEG file. And what that'll do is create a RAW file and also create a JPEG file. The RAW file will be the color file. The JPEG will, of course, be in black or white. Of course, it's going to be in JPEG. So there's that. So again, that's one of the things that you've got to be mindful about. Now, the other thing I wanted to show you is also Sony and Olympus also have this as well, too. You go to the Sony one. The Sony one, <coughs> excuse me, I'm sorry. 
The Sony one also has that too. If you notice right there, they got their little picture control created with a creative style where you can actually change some of it. And there's of course black and white. However, they have what they call rich tone black and white under picture effect. And what that does is kind of, you know, uh, very similar to what Olympus does is what they have what they call dramatic tone effect. And I'll show you that in just a second. But the idea is what the rich black and white does is it really gives it a unique black and white spectrum to the image, meaning it kind of creates an HDR type of almost effect with black and white, which is kind of cool. Excuse me again, sorry. So there's that. Now Olympus also does something similar like that too as well. Now, let me zoom up on this so you can see some of the section right here. So right here, if you look at this right here, you've got picture mode options, which you've got monochrome, which produces a black and white tone. However, there's a thing that's called dramatic, and it's not listed here in this particular manual, but there's another one there, it's called dramatic tone two. And that's the one I've been using quite a bit with the, my new Olympus. It's on the art filter settings, which you can choose from pretty much through any of the options where it says art mode or art filter or whatever. And that's one of the things that's kind of cool. Now what's kind of cool too, which is really nice, is that it, it also records this in a black and white as a raw file, or it also does a raw and a JPEG file. Again, like most of the raw files that you shoot, if you're using um, a system like Lightroom and you want to see the raw file black and white, it's not going to show it to you black and white. You'll see it for maybe a second or two before it reverts to the uh, raw data. Now, if you use like software like the Olympus uh, uh, Workstation or Sony's uh, software or Canon or Nikon's particular software, then yes, you'll see the uh, black, the picture style. In fact, then you can change the picture style or the picture control or whatever they're calling it. Like they're calling it, you know, creative style, wh whatever they're calling it. It doesn't really matter. The idea is, is this is where you can see all that stuff and make those options for you. So again, you can see this all in their software, or you can just get what I've been doing with my Olympus camera. This guy right here is it actually been in the uh, uh, the files? Let me try this again. What I usually do is I put it in raw and JPEG. So I've got the raw file, which is the color information, and then I have the JPEG file, which is also in black and white. So, but I can also open this up in my the Olympus workstation and also do something in there and keep it there, and I can also even change the art filter again after I've shot it, which is really, really kind of cool. So that can be a lot of fun. I haven't really done too much of that in the workstation. Uh, I usually just shoot it in the, uh, in the raw and the JPEG and just go from there. So to kind of give you an idea, I'm gonna go back to uh, uh, screen share. I'm gonna get close out this uh, Lightroom here real quick before I do that. Uh, on this one, let's go to another catalog I just opened up. It was, was it going to this one? Is that one? Nope, didn't mean to do that. All right, we can stop screen share while this is all happening. Oops. So, one of the things that when dealing with some of this stuff, and like I said, I'm doing the black and white stuff, is that. You know, I'm trying to make executive decisions while I'm out there. So I don't necessarily want to be also tied to all those executive decisions. I want to have a little bit of leeway, a little bit of wiggle room, as it were, for in case I, I change my mind, which I, I, I frequently do. So it's one of those things. All right, I think this is up right now. Let me take a look. No, it's still loading up. Never mind. Yeah, it's just one of those things. It's like you have to hurry up and wait. Yeah, I'm getting the, uh, the circle of death now, so I'll have to wait and see what happens here. It's taking forever for it to think about. So anyway, so while this is all thinking about that, let's go back to this. So while it's thinking about trying to reopen that thing up, the, uh, the oh, here it comes. So the idea is when I'm working around, well, again, with black and white, is this that, you know, like I said, I am obviously shooting everything in color at the time, and I'm not using any other special filter except for maybe occasionally a circular polarizer or a neutral density filter. And that's pretty much about it. It's really nothing else. Now, what I want to do is I want to show you some of the options I had with my Olympus as far as it goes. The reason I want to show you some of these things because I've been really excited about shooting with this. It's been a lot, a lot of fun. Uh, shooting this thing. In fact, it's got me more excited about uh, about photography recently than anything else. 
because it's it's opened up a whole new range for what I could do, at least for me anyway, creatively. So let me get it back over to here and I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about. So, so this is the picture I shot with the Olympus, I think it was the Pen F, I think I did, or no, this was the EM2, uh, I think is what it was, EM1 Mark II. So this is the picture that shot in color, and this is the one I did right there. Now I opened this up in the, uh, uh, the Olympus Works, and that way I also had this in the raw file, which the Let's Lightroom defaults to, but I also took the raw file in Olympus Works, and I saved it, of course, as the dramatic two uh, type, to, dramatic tone two uh, filter which is how I shot it. So one of the things that's really cool is that when you're shooting with black and white and you get to see the results of what it does, it's like I literally don't really have too much things to do. I did a little bit of cropping just to even it out because I was hand holding it. But what's really cool, at least for me, what I like about this stuff is it really shows the, the differences in the tonal range of the marbling of this because you lose this pretty much with the human eye because it kind of almost washes in together. But also by turning it black and white, I get to see the actual marbling of that stuff. So again, this is one of the things that I think is really fascinating about black and white. And again, being able to have both of these images and being able to look at those two things, it's just one of those things that I just really, really have enjoyed doing. It's been a lot of fun. And it's, like I said, it just like opens up a whole new creativity of me. Creativity in, in my in my style of photography, which I which I haven't been doing. I find myself at easily switching to the dramatic two filter and just shooting everything in black and white. Yeah, I'm shooting a raw on a JPEG, but then again, I can uh, I can open up an open Olympus works to just save it right there, or I can take a look at the JPEG file. Then I can easily do some manipulation on some of the raw stuff and do stuff like that, you know. And it's good just to kind of give you an idea of some of the options of you know how it looks. Let me zoom back. So here it is without it, here it is with. This one reduced a little bit of a halo effect around it, but it's not too bad, I kind of like that. I, I reshot it again for a little bit better composition. You can see right there, again, a little bit of a halo effect around it, but again, not too bad. And I, like I said, it's a lot more dynamic, I think, overall. So I've been very, very happy with the, uh, the process. So here's again the picture that I shot again, and then enter, enter dynamic two filter again. You can see it just does, I think, what I like it's called, called a, a bangerang job. It just does a really, really great job overall. I'm very happy with it. I'm going to stop sharing the screen right now. Let me see if I can close up my Lightroom so I can get rid of that. Do you really want to quit? Sure. Uh, let me go back to see if I can see anybody on Facebook. All right. We got, uh, let's see who's joined me. I got two. I got Audi. Oh, hey, Tom. How you doing? Hey, Kyler. How are you doing? Glad you guys uh, popped in. Thank you very much. So these are some of the things that I've been working on, you know, and some of the things that I, I've enjoyed doing. Uh, you know, and uh, like I said, you know, I, I can't thank anybody enough for, for all their, uh, uh, for their support and their, and their time and their energy and their patience as I kind of stumble, drag myself through some of these uh, new, uh, newfangled technologies as far as dealing with the uh, black. Well, who says newfangled technologies these days? Apparently I do, but, <laughs> but you know, it's been a lot of fun just uh, talking with everyone with these zoom meetings and these webinars and stuff like that. I've really enjoyed that. It's been, a, you know, something that it's really made it made everything worthwhile. As I said, I got a couple of uh, Patreon folks and uh, I'm not sure if I need to drag their, if they want me to drag their names up, but I want to thank David and, and Margaret for their for support and Patreon. Uh, a Patreon. I'm doing a special, special discount for those of you who are interested. If you subscribe to my Patreon uh, for $30 a month, I'll be doing a up to a 90-minute private photo and camera le lesson with you guys, if you guys are interested in that. Uh, you, you don't have to subscribe for the whole year. You can subscribe for once a month or, or the whole year if you want to do that. That's purely up to you. That's just a uh, you know option if you want to do that. Um, yeah, that's pretty much about it. As I said, uh, I've, I've I've had a lot of fun doing all this stuff. It's been it's been a treat and a joy, and I've really enjoyed doing these things. I'm going to keep doing these for as long as I can until people probably get bored and sick and tired of me. I'm going to try to keep doing these things about once a week. Uh, it's probably going to end up being on Sundays. It's either Sundays or Mondays. You know, I'm not sure. I haven't really found a specific 
the time that I could just do these so that way everyone gets an idea of when I'm going to do it. At least these uh, Facebook Live things. So, uh, but uh, I'll, uh, sooner or later, I will have uh, figured all this stuff out. Excuse me again. All right. Well, I think I've taken up too much of your time tonight. So, thank you very much for your indulgence. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed some of my uh, techniques. Uh, again, I'll be doing a uh, Ask Photo Dono uh in the evening tomorrow at six o'clock so if you guys are interested in doing that again you go to johnson's website you go to my site you know again the links are here in the description you'll be able to take a look at that and again as i said i'll be uploading this to youtube as soon as the video finishes processing takes a takes it a moment or two especially after i've been yammering for quite a bit uh but yeah uh, let's see who else is on here oh i got three viewers here now on facebook live yay <laughs> Well, again, thank you all very much. I appreciate you taking the time to watch me ramble on. So that's a lot of fun. All right, I'm going to end this now. And uh, again, thank you all very much. And uh, I hope to see you all in life, uh, in live, in live, in live view very soon. <laughs> I was going to say life mode, but remember, maybe it's life mode or live mode. Oh, wait, before I go, before I, I wanted to mention this real quick. So I've been wearing this little goofy hat, right? For all these things. You can see it's done a number to my hair, but my dad found this cute little button on here that I've been putting it, uh, I can see if I can hold it, oops, it's kind of falling out right there, right about there. And I can't tell if that's a dragon or some sort of Chinese dragon or some sort of weird unicorn or whatever, but I stuck that on top of my hat. So just for fun, I was wearing, this is the getup I was wearing for, for Uber when I was making my uh, deliveries <laughs> out there. So you saw this guy coming. Oh, wait, well, what, with this, this will be the full effect right here. Here, I'll have to take off the headset. So this was the uh, full effect that was coming to the door for some of these people. <laughs> and uh, so, but yeah, we usually it was all contactless, meaning I, I rang, I, it was like, you know, like one of those childhood things, you, know, you, you knock on the door and quickly run away. <laughs> so that was part of it. <laughs> all right. All right. Now, okay. Now I am going to sign off. All right. Thanks guys. And uh, I'll talk to you all later. Bye.